Okay, good morning. Good morning. I assume, Michael, that the screen share is up there working. Our screen share is up. I believe okay. everyone can see. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm really disappointed that we're not seeing you. I think somehow <laughs> setting up as panelists made it happen like this, but um, we will actively communicate with you throughout the session. Um, Michael has already set the session to record, right? Yeah. yeah. So that if you wanted to watch it again or a, another tpf -er would like to use it as a resource, it will be posted and the slides will be posted also. If you have any questions, obviously now you need to put them in the chat because we can't see raised hands. So we really thank you for joining us today for this webversation on TPF's new benefit, a tuition reimbursement program for eligible staff and eligible consultants who can get reimbursed for taking courses at the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. I'm Joni Steinberg, and I'm the initiative lead. I'm a consultant at TPF and the initiative lead for advancing philanthropic leadership. We're joined today by, I feel like, Pamela, you're my colleague already, although you're living in Indianapolis, you are. Um, Pamela is the assistant dean for enrollment management and student success at Indiana University, Lilly Family School of Philanthropy, and I suspect that you all know Michael Zimmerman. He is a graduate of the Lilly Family School Executive Master's Program and now a TPF fellow in our third cohort. I thought it was particularly valuable to have him here to join us today because he completed his courses at a distance. He went back to school, um, back to IU, and returned for a master's degree working in New York and taking most of his courses at a distance while working full time. So we have great resources with us today. I wanted to give you a little bit of background. Um, maybe you're really familiar with this already. Uh, in 2018, the Patterson Foundation began a collaboration with the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy at Indiana University. That's grown and it's strengthened since then. We're now this summer welcoming our fourth cohort of TPF fellows. We've collaborated on elective courses for IU students to IU Lilly Family School of Philanthropy students to include our March uh, Study Away course. Maybe you interacted with some of those students during that one week time period with Pamela as the lead faculty member for that course. And Deborah has also uh, delivered a, an elective course to Lilly Family School students, a course called Beyond the Check that was offered about a year ago and will be offered again in 2023. In addition, as this collaboration has grown, we, TPF, are now funding internships, which are generally not paid for undergraduates or graduates when they work at nonprofits, but we have um, a system of some of our nonprofit partners. Not the day I wanted my lawn mowed. I'm sorry if you're hearing that. Um, uh, some of our nonprofit partners um, posting job descriptions that might appeal to some of these students and they connect and they make an arrangement and they then virtually, the IE students do an internship here, sort of here with uh, TPF partners. I also want to mention that Pamela has played key roles in creating, leading, and supporting each of our collaborative efforts. In all of these collaborative efforts, um, our admiration has grown for Lilly Family School faculty, for their students, and the wonderful educational opportunities that they offer. With Deborah's guidance and the support of the governing board, it is now the case that TPF is offering this um, tuition reimbursement program to give you the opportunity to continue your educational journey through academic and or professional development courses. 
We're all very enthusiastic about this new opportunity for TPFers. And we today want to review some of the program highlights, uh, discuss how it can be helpful to you for you to learn more about Lilly Family School philanthropy offerings. And of course, to give you an opportunity to ask questions. So following in the TPF tradition, I would like to ask a, um, <clears throat> I guess it's questions of the day. I thought we were gonna have two way communication here. So I'm very sorry about that, but maybe if you could each post introducing yourself in which area of TPF work you are immersed and identify one word that describes your feeling when you first learned about this new program. Joni, I think they can actually speak if, like if you go to the panelists, um, I mean, the attendee view, you can click on allow to talk so we could talk. Oh, yay. Oh, thank you. So do I do that or does Michael do that? I'm, I'm going to uh, attempt that right now. Hold uh, on a second. Let's see if we can get Thank this. you. Yep. We're on new ground here. All right. It says talking permitted. All right. So <laughs> let's hear from everybody. So I, Josephine, I see your box open. She's Hi, on can mute. You, can you hear me? I can. Yay. <laughs> Oh, Maybe perfect. if you want, you can put your camera on. Uh, that's up to you. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's, let's try that. I don't think I can. Okay. Hmm. No, it's only letting me talk. I don't have a button for a video. At least All we right. can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. This is a new experience. So, Josephine. Good, good morning and hello. And I'm so excited to be here to find out more. Um, my name is Josephine Eisenberg. Obviously, I've been with um, a consultant with the Patterson Foundation since 2015 um, in multiple areas, but currently I support the initiatives, Aspiration to Actions, um, and the nonprofit Thriveability Initiative, which includes a margin mission ignition, fueling dynamic fundraising, and advancing mission thriveability. Great. And wait, so, and then the one word, um, thrilled. Would thrilled. Be word. thrilled. Great word. Who would like to go next? Josephine, thank you very much. I'm glad to learn more about you. Thank you. I can go next. Sure. Good morning. My Good morning. name is Sarah. And I have been with TPF uh, this year and last year, so I am newer than Josephine. Um, I work with This Book is Cool and the Suncoast Summer Reading Challenge, so working with the families and the summer camps. And one word to describe how I'm feeling when I heard about this was definitely intrigued. Intrigued. Terrific. It's good to know more about you, Sarah. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. My name is Melissa. Um, I've been with TPF since November of 2018 um, on, a, on a, you know, a basis of here and there when I first started, when I could help out. Um, and now I'm definitely here a lot more. Um, most of the time I'm spent at the point doing um, this book is cool heading kindergarten readiness distribution and preparation um, helped kelly with their camps this summer and then now we're prepping for this book is cool in school as well um, really it's hard to narrow it down to one word um, generous would be the first word i would use but it's truly just an amazing opportunity i think we think so we hope this is going to work out for each of you who else is there? Hi, this is Lori Miller. Um, I've hey, been Lori. With... Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> um, I've been with the Patterson Foundation since March of 2020. 
Um, and I've been working with This Book is Cool and the Suncoast uh, Remake Learning Days and the Summer Reading Challenge. And also my first, uh, the first word that came to mind was intrigued. Intrigued. Two of you are intrigued. <laughs> yes, that's terrific. I think we have a study group already assembled here for this book is from the this book is cool people. What do you think? So, um, I think I may have met some of you either at the immersion or also we did stuffing of kindergarten readiness um, bags a while ago. So I'm sorry not to see you here again, but thank you. Um, we are going to move on. I'm on. I need to. We have Karen still. Hi. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't see there was sorry. another person. I'm, I'm getting ready to go to work. Um, but um, um, my name is Karen Orengo. I work with uh, this book is cool mostly. I've been with the Patterson Foundation for, um, I don't know, I can't remember, like three years maybe. Um, and one word that describes how I feel about this program is excited. I love learning and I love um, anything that um, I can do extra. And I just like to learn new things. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm just excited to learn about this. That's terrific. I think we now have a bigger This Book is Cool study group potential study group so well thank you is there anybody else because I'm not seeing thank you for you all keeping an eye on it that's great so I'd like to very quickly run through the eligibility although I think that you have this documented in the flyer with Deborah's original email morning missive on June 16th and then Nancy sent you this flyer again, but just to review it, who's eligible, TPF staff after 90 days of employment and TPF consultants on the first day of the month following you being at TPF one year, providing that you've worked 250 hours in the prior 12 months. And on a later discussion, we will guide you to, if you're not sure if you meet that criteria, Nancy Vafayas can address that question and answer it for you. Also, of course, in enrolling, the participants must meet Lilly Family School admissions eligibility requirements, and Pamela will be discussing those with you in a while. Also, what courses can you take? You can take any course under this program that's offered by Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. That includes the academic courses, it includes the professional development courses in the fundraising school, and both have a wide selection of courses that are offered at a distance. The costs that are covered are for distance courses are generally all of your out-of-pocket costs, certainly tuition and fees, course materials up to $100, I guess, books and materials. And then there are some unique situations where maybe the fundraising school has a weekend course somewhere, or you may want to do something in Indianapolis for a brief period of time and will reimburse up to $500. The reason I point out here that the tuition is priced at in-state rates is really two reasons. One, it's very generous of the Lilly Family School to offer this to us. We are a, we consider them our partner, we're a partner to them, but that also means that since we don't reimburse until the course is over, that you're at, should you take a course, your out-of-pocket costs for academic courses are at the in-state rates. Um, okay. So I would now like to, to turn this over to Michael. As I said before, he has a unique perspective because he knows CPF and he knows about taking these courses at a distance. Michael. Hi, thanks, Joni. Okay, so um, Joni, Pamela, and I put together a little poll. Um, so I'm going to launch the poll right now. We'd like for everyone to participate and answer um, uh, the question, or excuse me, the answer, select the answer that resonates with you. And then, because uh, we're just curious to see where everyone falls in this. So here we go. We're going to launch the poll now. So poll question is, at the moment, what is a main reason this program could be of interest to you? 
we have the opportunity to broaden my understanding of philanthropy to apply at TPF and future work. We have TPF funding for this continued educational journey. We have enthusiastic about learning in an academic environment. Um, also possibly pursuing a certificate or degree. And then another reason that's not cited above or could be all of the above. And we're seeing our results come in. We have three, now we have four. Oh, we're at five of five. So I'm going to close our poll and uh, share our results. So bear with me. Okay, here we are. So uh, three out of five um, <clears throat> um, of those joining us today said that uh, th at the moment, the main reason that this program could be of interest to them is for the opportunity to broaden their understanding of philanthropy, to apply at TPF and future work. Um, and I can certainly say that is um, a great reason. It's certainly one of the reasons uh, why I chose to pursue the master's, one of many reasons, um, thinking about my future in the sector and my future you know, career and opportunities and um, just being uh, more immersed in uh, the world of philanthropy and broadening my understanding. So yes, absolutely. Um, we're gonna also jump down. We have one answer, possibly pursuing a certificate or degree. Um, absolutely, it's exciting and what a great way to get, uh, to have it uh, funded. Uh, so uh, certainly an amazing benefit that uh, not every employer offers. Um, so, wow, pretty cool. And then the last, uh, we have someone that said all the above and I'm with you. Uh, I think a lot of these uh, uh, reasons presented are all great reasons to um, explore this opportunity. Um, so thank you for uh, taking part in the poll question. I'm gonna stop sharing here. We're gonna move on to our next slide. Um, so uh, bear with us here. Um, So why um, might someone want to consider courses at uh, Indiana University's Lilly Family School of Philanthropy at this point in their careers, right? We are um, you know, either consulting with the Patterson Foundation on different initiatives. We are uh, working you know, you know, with the Patterson Foundation. Um, uh, we could be a fellow at the Patterson Foundation and thinking about the opportunity to pursue a certificate in, in fundraising, right? So there's, um, you know, really interesting opportunities here. So the first thing I want to say, and then I'd like to even share, um, you know, my personal experience, you know, journey and experience with this. It is the only school in the world dedicated to the study of philanthropy. Um, and it encompasses every area of society into its study, its format, and its curricula. So what does that mean? In one instant, you could be taking a course on um, foundation's role um, in you know, democracy and how that's played out in different countries. I learned in, in, uh, in one of the courses I took here that um, fascinatingly, Egypt, when Egypt uh, had the Arab Spring and uh, overthrew Mubarak, there were a group of foundations that were the catalyst uh, for funding that funded nonprofits to move the country there. So of course that questions, oh, what does that mean for democracy and the power of foundations in other countries? And, you know, so it just provokes the mind to think about our, our world of philanthropy through many different lenses. And, um, and I don't think I would have been uh, given that type of perspective had I not participated in this program. Um, I think it's also strong, um, important to mention that the Patterson Foundation and the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy have had a four years of tremendous collaboration, um, you know, certainly on our TPF study away, our advancing philanthropic leadership initiative through which I was given an opportunity to come here as a fellow as well as Connor and the three fellows prior and the two fellows after. Um, and so um, I think that makes a bold statement, both in seeing the value of, you know, all of us in the, you know, who are attending this room and all those who couldn't be here um, at TPF, um, you know, it makes that bold statement of the importance of going through this unique academic journey and particularly at the Lilly Family School. Um, I think it's also important to know, no matter where you are in your career, uh, the study of philanthropy in this program is transformative and directly applicable to our work. 
Um, I actually feel it complements what we learn at TPF and strengthens our understanding and our perspective of topics within philanthropy. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think that um, to say, I mean, to say the least, I certainly worked in fundraising um, for a good five to six years before I began my degree in this. And my curiosity was around what other aspects of philanthropy beyond the check, beyond the fundraising, might I not have you know, been able to immerse myself in because I was so focused in major gifts and fundraising. And I think that I would actually say to credit the program, it was because of the program that I was, um, I started to grow a curiosity around the work of foundations, the work of, you know, other, you know, institutions and philanthropy, CSR departments. I mean, just my curiosity grew around what else. And I think it's important um, for us to, you know, have that opportunity to, you know, grow our understanding and the, and the program will offer that. I want to say this, and I say this, um, hoping that of course everyone stays at TPF as long as you know they wish to. Um, but TPF may not be your last stop on your career train. So to have an academic foundation upon which to launch from TPF at any point will be a highly will be highly desired by professionals and leaders across the nonprofit sector. So I think that's something to take into consideration. And um, lastly, um, it's it's not only the perspective of the professors that are teaching the courses, it's the students learning alongside you and the interactive and high touch engagement that's fostered and encouraged through the online portal through Canvas, um, which is the online portal they use. And I can say this, I have made connections and friendships through this online and even going, there's a, a through the executive masters, which is the one that I did where you're working full time, everyone's working full time for the most part and studying part time, um, which is, I imagine what everyone would be doing here. Um, you're meeting people that are late in their careers um, and, um, and just curious about expanding their understanding of philanthropy. You're meeting people who are just starting and you're meeting people in the middle and um, it's diverse. They're from all different, you know, I mean, it's diverse in so many ways. It's diverse in race, it's diverse in gender, it's diverse in uh, religion, it's diverse in ethnicity, um, and it's international as well. And, um, and I think it's just, a, a, it creates a unique space to explore so many topics, gain new perspectives, and create relationships with people that are gonna also continue their career paths, and you have an opportunity to connect with them in a place where it's not about um, either collaborating or working together in, a, in, in the you know, TPF versus you know, other relationship, but rather a we're all learning together and it's a learning community. Um, and uh, there's a real um, earnest um, and sincere yearning to share knowledge, share perspective and, and grow. And I think that all aligns with TPF values and tenets. So let me pause there uh, because I think that's uh, a good amount of knowledge about why to consider courses at IU. But I know um, as we go to the next slide, Pamela may want to add more uh, from what I may have not mentioned here. Yeah, I, um, I guess I would start by saying, you know, that, that within the Lilly Family School, we have academic programs. Uh, which is where I primarily work, which is our degree programs. So we have a, a, an undergraduate degree, we have uh, graduate level certificates, we have a master's program, and we have a PhD. We're also getting ready to launch um, a PhilD, which is a doctorate program um, that you can do from a distance as well. Um, outside of that, we also have institutes within our school. So the fundraising school um, is a professional development arm of our school. And so those courses are much shorter. So they're not a semester in length like, like our academic programs courses. Um, and they're only focused on different areas within fundraising. Um, and they could be a day or they could be two days. They're very, very short, but they're very practical and they're great um, courses as well. It just kind of depends on the type of uh, learning that you're looking for and how long you want to be engaged in that and how deep of a dive that you want to take. 
And I'll briefly also mention, we do have other institutes within the School of Philanthropy that include um, in the Mays Institute on Diverse Philanthropy. And we also have the Lake Institute, uh, which covers religion and faith-based organizations and philanthropy. And then we have a Muslim philanthropy initiative as well. So we, we, we really kind of pride ourselves on being sort of the go-to place on anything philanthropy. Um, and on top of that, we have our own research department and our research department um, does custom work for organizations, but they also have kind of regular reports that come out. The largest of which is called Giving USA, which you may have heard about before if you've ever been involved in fundraising, but that's a report that talks about how Americans give and volunteer. Um, and that's, that's a really important report for fundraisers that they look forward to receiving each year. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you a, a little bit of, of background on the school. I would also say that, you know, we really focus more on the why, not that we don't focus on the how, but I think like a lot of our people and you included, you've been working in the field and you understand a lot of the how, you know how to do things in your organization. This is a, a next level type of degree program where we not only discuss the how, but we discuss the why. Why is, why is the system set up the way it is? You know, why do we have a nonprofit sector? Um, why do we go about fundraising in this manner? Um, why do we look at different perspectives when thinking about community issues? So there's a lot of kind of the question of why behind, um, behind things uh, in the field. And I think that's really important to people who are aspiring to be leaders in the field or who just want a deeper understanding. Um, so we, we do have people literally who've, who've been working in the field for 20 years that want to come to our school um, not necessarily in pursuit of a different career or, or a career change, but just because they really want to uh, understand things better and, and, um, and they have a curious mind. Um, and I will echo what Michael said, the, the students uh, in the program are simply amazing to me. And that, that's, of course, my area. That's I work in student services. So um, it, it makes sense that that would be my focus. But I think it's so neat that people come from all different areas of the country and the world. They come with a variety of, of interests um, and a variety of career focuses. And it, I just think it makes such a rich conversation um, in the program. So this slide here kind of outlines uh, the certificates um, that we have. There's one that's a certificate in philanthropic studies. It's just four courses. Um, it includes a course called the Nonprofit and Voluntary Sector. It includes a fundraising course and an ethics course. And then you can choose any class we have for the last one. There's also a certificate in philanthropic fundraising which is obviously more of a focus on fundraising. They still um, uh, require the nonprofit and voluntary sector course, which is really kind of considered our intro or foundation course. The principles and practices of fundraising. There's a donor behavior and major and plan giving course. There's an institutional fundraising course. And then again, you can choose uh, the fifth course can be any class that we offer. And both of these certificates, if you start with those and then decide that you wanna go on to the master's uh, program will fold over into the master's program. So um, those classes will count towards the 12 courses that are required for the master's degree as well. And, um, and so as we kind of go a little farther, you're, you'll see some other courses that we offer through academic programs. The fundraising school offers certificates as well, but they're um, not graduate level certificates. They don't appear on a transcript. They're professional development or continuing education. You might uh, have heard it called things like that. They have a certificate in fundraising management, which is their most popular certificate. Um, but they also have a few other options and you can just take a class in either side of things. So in academic programs, if you just want to take one or two classes, you can do that in the fundraising school. You can certainly take a one class or two classes, however many you want without getting a certificate. And then um, I would also point out that for the fundraising school classes, there's no requirement to have an undergraduate degree. Um, you can take these with any academic level or background um, and there's no issue around that. Um, there, there are also, um, oh, I guess I'll wait till the next. Any questions on this? I feel like 
I'm talking a lot, so I want to pause and see if anyone has any questions so far. Okay, so th this slide just shows a few of our classes that are coming up um, in the fall for the academic program side of things, so for the degree side. Um, history of philanthropy, the nonprofit and voluntary sector, which I've mentioned before, economics and philanthropy, and psychology of giving. At our school, we offer, um, of course, on-campus classes, but we also offer both online and virtual, and you'll see that uh, at the top of the slide there. The difference is for online classes, they're asynchronous, meaning you don't have to be on the computer at a particular time. You can do the work and just follow the deadlines as it fits best in your schedule. The virtual offerings include some sort of Zoom uh, component to it so that you are asked to be online for a particular time. In this case, the Psychology of Giving class meets on Wednesdays from 3 to 545. Um, so we do have on campus, we have online, we have virtual. And then the last one I want to mention is the hybrid course, which Michael may want to chime in about because he participated in this. But in the academic program side of things, um, there are summer hybrid courses and you begin uh, online and finish online, but there is one week in July that you travel to Indianapolis and you're here for a very um, intensive, immersive week, um, which is usually with a very small group. So you might have 10 to 15 students in the class with a faculty member. Um, and it's really a great way to feel a little bit more connected to the school and uh, to really be able to interact on a more personal level. And um, it's a very busy week, but it's also a, a very fun week. You get a chance to do some socializing too with people that you know have a lot of the same interests as you. Um, so I don't know if Michael, do you wanna add anything about that? Yeah. Well, I, I'd love to. That was doing uh, that week in that week in person was one of the highlights um, of of the work because the 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 semester starts in the in, for the summer months you know around late May June um, online and you could be working on projects or you know working on different modules and then it leads up to this in person week. And with and and it's great, you know. I remember doing a law course in person. So during that week, we were, you know, at, you know, we did a simulation of being in a courtroom with the attorney general and <clears throat> defending cases around, you know, a hospital that you know wants to leave its article of incorporation to, you know, to deviate from it and do, you know, serve a different mission. You know, how does that work? Uh, when the needs have changed in a community and you have to defend that in court to, you know, petition for it to be changed or, or make a case rather for it to be changed. So we learned about that. So it was kind of fun to, you know, you know, not that it was like Judge Judy, but it was like this, you know, interesting, <laughs> you know, uh, inter, you know, it was interactive. It was awesome. And I just remembered me, you know, connecting with people in such a unique way one of you know the person defending the case worked with like estate planning at Wells Fargo. The other, um, my other classmate was from Turkey, working with a foundation in Istanbul. Like it was just this unique and eclectic group and diverse, and it was just and we had a blast. Um, it's also fun to go out in Indianapolis afterwards and you know just get dinner to get you know everyone wants to just hey you know let's get dinner let's get to know each other. Um, it, it's just a friendly fun and and again interested in the same area of work. So you already have what to bond over um, and beyond that. So uh, we, that work, that week was a highlight. So Pamela, thank you for letting me chime in a little bit there. I think I'm ready for the next slide. There we go. These are just some additional courses. The uh, couple of these I mentioned uh, before, and I think Michael mentioned the grant making and the role of, of foundations course. The last two courses there, I just wanna mention briefly. We have, uh, most of our classes are three credits, which is typical for, for what people do um, either at the undergraduate or graduate level, but we do also have some one credit courses. So corporate philanthropy and the social capital fundraising model are also, um, one credit classes with a Zoom component. And we decided to start doing these to see um, what the interest would be in new topic areas and to um, allow some practitioners to come in and teach in our program 
so that the students would have an opportunity to not only hear from you know, the academics in our program, but to have more interaction uh, with practitioners and learn from them and their experience. So um, these one credit courses, you can easily tack on uh, to a, another course. And then if you get three of these, then you have an elective completed. So they're much shorter in length, um, usually just three or six or eight weeks, um, as opposed to the full 16 week semester. So they're kind of quick to get through. They're um, more um, practical in nature and just uh, really interesting topics. We're working on one for the spring on uh, philanthropy and oceans and environment um, that I think will be really neat. So we try to kind of get some um, interesting topics that we don't normally teach and try out some topics to see what students are interested in learning. And then this is a list of um, some of the upcoming courses through the fundraising school, which remember are those professional development courses. They also teach all across the, the nation. Um, so if you go to our website, you can get a complete list of everything that they're offering, which includes not only virtual and online offerings, but ones in person, both in Indianapolis and then in other locations throughout the US. And then in terms of what to do next, so um, you'll see here that uh, Nancy Buffayas can help you um, determine your eligibility. And then I think the next best thing would be to meet with me individually, because I can help you think through which might be the best options for you. Um, we can talk about what your goals are and how you might best reach those. Um, we can talk about the, um, the admissions process for both sides, as you might imagine, it's much easier and quicker to take a fundraising school class in terms of the application process, <clears throat> excuse me, than a graduate level course, but, um, but it just depends kind of on what you're looking to do um, based on why you want to take these courses. And then I can help you begin the application process on either side. Um, and then once you complete the courses, then you can file for reimbursement through the Patterson Foundation. So, oh, Pamela and Michael, thank you. I, I'd really like to leave the rest of the time to hear from you all so that you can ask questions. And I was wondering what about this opportunity now captures your attention after hearing um, so much presented today, and what do you need to know to take the next step forward? So I think I'm just going to open it up for questions. And since you have Pamela and Michael here as resources, and Michael, maybe you can see who's asking to speak next, or? <clears throat> yeah, um, if, if you want to unmute yourself at this point, uh, you can. Um, I, I know we have the raise hand feature, but I don't think it's necessary. I think if you just unmute. I think I think Melissa just unmuted. Melissa. Hello. Well, first of all, thank you guys very much for um, doing this. Definitely even more intrigued than what I was. Um, you know, I love being at the Patterson Foundation and Suncoast Campaign for grade level reading. So really what intrigues me most is just continuing on and learning more about the nonprofit and how I can do more um, and incorporate that into TPF and what we do here. Anything you need to know to proceed, other than jumping right to having a conversation with Pamela when you're ready? Um, no, I feel pretty comfortable. You guys okay. did a, a, an amazing job on giving the information of what we really need to do. Um, I think my next step would be to talk to Pamela. Okay, good. Thank you. Any, thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Sarah. guys so much for Hi, obviously explaining this opportunity and taking the time to share all this information. Um, as a next step forward, will we be receiving Pamela's information? I'm not sure what you're saying about Pamela's information. I have her contact information at the back of the slide set. Yes, sorry, my my internet connection. It no, that's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's yes, Pamela C. Information. Okay. Um, is that what you were asking about the contact information? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have it at the back. Plus, if you 
I think Nancy Henry shared with you a flyer on the program. And I do think Pamela's contact information is embedded in there many places. And I, and I work in the summer. So if anybody, you know, wants to meet with me, I can meet with you individually by Zoom or whatever works best right. for you. I'm happy to. Thank Question. you. Question. Anybody else? I just want to say thank you as well. Um, still thrilled. I think I would have two words like more thrilled, <laughs> double thrilled, um, interested in um, pursuing my master's degree with you guys. And I do have a quick question. I know we need to verify our eligibility with Nancy Vivaeus, but since Pamela is here, maybe it is or isn't the right time, but I know one of the requirements is a um, 3.0 in undergraduate uh, courses. I do have my um, degree, but it, it was a long, long time ago, <laughs> and I wasn't as committed to learning <laughs> yeah, at that yeah. particular and, moment. Yeah, I'm sure, um, and that's that's actually fairly common. So you know, don't don't worry about that. There are some things that we can talk about, kind of one on one, about ways we might go about doing uh, that. We do a holistic review of your application, so GPA is not the only thing that we. Uh, we consider and, um, you know, if you start either as a non-degree student and just take a class or if you start with the certificate before the master's, sometimes you, your application can be looked at a little bit differently um, if you have a lower GPA. So um, I would be happy to talk to you about that um, separately and we can, you know, kind of get more specific about your case, but. Okay, and, and will that, will that, I mean, so our eligibility with Nancy that's not a requirement to, to, to move forward to be able to talk to you, Pamela. No, no. Okay. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. And, and also, if you have questions about how to balance this, what, like, what realistically does someone's life look like when they're working full time and studying part time? I am happy to have a conversation about that because I did that for three and a half years um, in Brooklyn while I was working. Um, and, and, and doing, major, you know, a major gifts officer. So I just, you know, I'm really, I'm happy to have that conversation. I think it's an important one to have. Uh, so you can have an expectation of, um, you know, what, you know, the balance, free time, study time, life. Um, of course, my situation doesn't exactly mirror everyone else's uh, here. So you might have bigger commitment, you know, but I'm happy to have that conversation. And that brings another quick question, if I can. Michael, you mentioned that you had your, you got your executive or you were enrolled in the executive master's program. Is that like a separate, like a specifically separate program, executive not, master's versus regular master's? Not really. You, 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 the master's degree curriculum is the same. It doesn't change if you say that you're an online student or if you're an executive student or if you're an on-campus student. You take all the same classes. It's just a way for us to understand how you view yourself. Um, and even if you signed up as an online student and wanted to take a summer hybrid class or an in-person class, we wouldn't say, no, you can't do that. So it's, it's just a way that helps us understand how you see yourselves. But the program is really the same. Thank you for that. Questions? Anybody? Um, I just want to say thank you um, for this great presentation and all the information you just gave us. Uh, it sounds like an amazing uh, place, and the program is, it sounds really cool. Um, just one quick question. So, if let's say we wanted to take a class, um, like continuing studies, um, is there a place where we can look at the dates where they when they start um in case let's say we can't start in the fall in august and we i don't know we have availability i don't know november or something you know do the classes go on like that or do they have to start in the fall and in the spring how does that work so, so especially for continuing education um they go all year round and you can pick a month and it lists uh, on this website that link that I just added to the chat, you know, yeah. what courses are offered in what format, where during each month. So um, feel free to click on that link and it should give you the information that you need. Okay, thank you so much. Anybody else? 
Any other questions? Here's contact information. I think Michael and I are easy to find on the TPF website. And Pamela is Pamela C for Clark at IU.edu. Plus, we're all either in the flyer or you can get the information. Um, any other questions? So I have a couple of other to do's here. Michael, we were supposed to do a screenshot, but we don't see people's faces, so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's... No, it's not the same anyway. <laughs> you know, I want to thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. I like showing off what they have at IU, both through Pamela and, and their graduates, the fellows. and. Um, when Deborah first posed this, it just seemed like an amazing opportunity of being, you know, I think she even said in her letter, we PPF works to strengthen individuals, organizations, and communities. And it's a lot of outward. And this is an example of inward, of strengthening individuals within our own organization. And hopefully it's a win-win, maybe win all around all the stakeholders. So um, I encourage you to talk to Pamela further about it because I think you can see she has the answers to about everything and just the way you guys raise specific situations. People have been through this before. So I don't think that you're, the characteristics you're describing are all that unusual. Um, Pamela or Michael, would you like to say anything else before we end? Yeah, I would just say thanks so much for your interest. And um, if you if you don't mind, help us spread the word to the other consultants so everybody knows about this wonderful right. opportunity. And um, and just let us know if any questions come up or if I can assist you in any way. I'm happy to do so. Yeah, I, and I want to just add to Pamela's comments and Joni's comments here. This this was life changing. It was it was really it was a life changing experience. It wasn't just a degree, it was both personal and professional growth. And I think there are bonds that you make in this program online and even for the in-person, but, but it totally happens online too, um, that just lasts a lifetime. It's, 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 I mean, it's unbelievable the network of people that you have as a result of doing this and what you learn as a result of doing this. It's, it's, it's so, the, the, it broadens your perspective, it broadens your understanding of philanthropy and it, it, it's within TPF and it's beyond TPF. It's just on another level um, of study. So the fact that I worked for um, organizations that either, either partially funded this and some said, we're not funding this, um, the fact that TPF is saying we'd like to fund the courses, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's a remarkable opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I highly encourage anyone that has the chance to do this, to do it while you're here at TPF, because um, I don't know when this, you know, where else this happens and certainly not with such, um, making such a bold statement to let everybody know that even consults that, hey, you know, everyone is welcome to do this. And I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm just, I encourage everyone, if you're interested and you want to do it, hop on the bandwagon, because this is just, you know, this is a door has opened that does not usually open. <laughs> so go run for the door. <laughs> yeah, And then um, I, I did, our website is just philanthropy.iupy.edu. There are a ton of videos of people just like Michael who are talking about their experience at the school. The fundraising school offers free podcasts and lots of other kind of professional development things that you can do. You know, if you're not quite ready yet, or if you just want to learn more about the school, those are great uh, ways to kind of to kind of investigate further, I guess I would say. So, you know, please feel free to take a look at our website and you'll learn a lot more information there as well. So, Pamela, I have a question for you. We're sitting towards the end of June at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is there still plenty of time to explore the academic courses for the fall that that's a possibility there's enough time to do that? I wouldn't say there's plenty of time, but I would say okay. there's time to do it. So. Okay, well, that's why I wanted to bring that up. So anybody who'd be interested in fall for the academic courses that they would know. 
Right. Yeah. So if, if that's an interest of yours and you think you can start as soon as the fall, you know, contact me as soon as you can and we can get you more information about the process. Okay. Thank you all. I'm sorry not to see faces today. We, I am, but thank you very much for attending. And let me know if you have any questions also, but um, obviously in terms of courses and programs, Pamela's a go-to person and then Michael, but thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.